Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Select News meeting of February 1st, 2018. And if you would uh, like to join me in uh, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Like a motion, entertain a motion to approve the different expense, wire, and payroll warrants. Uh, to approve the expense warrant from 118.18 for $132,486.47. Approve the wire warrant for 122.18 for $18.89. Approve the expense warrant 13018 for $10,906.10. Approve the payroll warrant for 13018 for $156,177.64. Approve the expense warrant for 13018 for $277.61. You have a motion to that effect? A second. Any discussion? All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Then I would also like a motion to approve this selectman's minutes from 123.18. Do you have that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Announcement. The Adina Archaeology Project Presentation Public Meeting, Eric Johnson, head of the Archaeology Department of UMass, will present the findings and recommendations from what was called the Camp Brown project at 6.30 p.m. February 13th in the Banquet Hall of the Town Hall, snow date February 20th. This project confirmed the existence of the Adena Connected Culture Living on Quaybog Pond 3,000 years ago. If no longer, contact Clarence Snyder at 508-637-1377 if you have any questions. The Board of Selectmen will hold a public meeting on the town Town's 2018 Community Development Block Grant application at 7 p.m. during the February 6th Selectmen's meeting. Town's residents and other interest stakeholders are encouraged to attend to learn about Brookfield's community development efforts. Does anyone have anything else to say? Yes. Well, I have something I'd like to say. I would like to commend our chief, Michael Blanchard. If everyone knows, uh, last Tuesday at the uh, West Brookfield branch of North Brookfield Savings, there was a robbery, and Mike was the first one to respond to that robbery. And I think he should be commended for this, and he his fast and his quick and work getting over there, and I think I'd like something to go in his file saying that. Absolutely. What everybody know how proud he was. He was right, he was right there when they needed it. Excellent. Okay. Okay, our first, we have public access. David? I'd like to speak, yes. Okay. I hope you make it brief. Well, I always make it brief. Well, sometimes you get a little more. <laughs> you that, right? Yeah. Um, why are we having a 90-day review on our town treasurer when she's been employed with us for at least seven months? We're supposed to have a 90-day review after the... Well, let me finish. Let me finish with the first. We're supposed to have a 90-day review when her 90 days are up. Now we're doing it seven months later. Is it off? Whenever, when was she hired? Back in June? She was, yeah. No, she was hired, was it July? Okay. July. All right, so four or five months. August. So, right, okay, so whatever the months, it should have been 90 days, and, and now we're doing it now on February 1st. Oh, we got <coughs> time just got away from us for the holidays and different things that we had coming up, so we decided to do it now, and it's in the bylaws that we have to do 90 days. Holidays, Linda. She got hired in July. She'd been done back in September. No, she started in August. Okay, okay, so she'd been done in October. What's that get to do with the holidays? Well, we got away from us. And now well, we're actually, actually, it would have been, been, been no, it would have been end of month November, which would have been right around Thanksgiving. And to the chair's point, we schedule it for January. Schedule it for January. Okay, but my point is, ninety days is ninety days. I don't care if it's, it's Thanksgiving or whenever. Oh, no, it's being done today, so. Okay, and 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 the same thing. This is this going back again. I, you know, you say this financial team is working hard. We're still two years behind 
Our books don't match up. We don't have free cash certified yet. We don't have a special town meeting set. I mean, I could go on and on, but you said to make it brief, so I'm going to make we, it brief. We answered your question last week, David, on that. We told you the books are finishing getting audits in uh, 2016 has been certified and now we're waiting to get to 2017. I, I, I understand all that, Linda, but the point I'm trying to make is you know, you're praising the financial team and they're working hard, but we're still two years behind. We've given these people more hours. No, we're not two years behind. Free cash, we have two years of free cash behind. Yes, we are, two years. We've given these people more hours and more pay, five, six dollars an hour increase per pay in their <coughs> hourly rate, and we're still they're, not getting things done. They're straightening out problems that were here from years ago, and it's getting straightened out. Okay, well, I just don't want to keep reinventing the wheel here. Let's We're just get the work done. We're not reinventing any wheel. We're trying to get the work done, and as soon as we have answers, then we will uh, let it known to the townspeople at a town meeting, like uh, the town accountant did. She sent the letter, brought it, came in with a letter. So we'll let you know as soon as we know. Okay. Is I've been up here a few, one more thing, I've been up here a few times. Is the town accountant working from her house or is she doing all the work in-house here? She, she works in-house and some days, say it's a bad snowy day, she works at home. Doing, okay, but otherwise she's here all the time? She's here all the time. Okay, all right, I'm gonna, okay. So I've, I've, you've even mentioned it last meeting that she's been working out of her house periodically. If it's a snow day, she well, if it's out of her home and say some days that she doesn't feel well, she's working hard. So okay. the work is getting done. Yeah, and, right. especially, work. and especially given the fact that we went to Vadar being yeah. the, the software as a service yeah. a couple of years ago. Um, okay. And that's one of the advantages you have when you have software as a service is that you can actually, if someone isn't feeling well enough, they don't have to come in and yeah. play Typhoid Mary. And they right. can still get yeah. the work but done. But the work, so. we the tried this practice is, before, Linda, with town accountants. Well, and the work should be done in house. Well, the hey, progress is being done because we're seeing the end results of it, David. Okay. Well, I just wish, I hope you three will be get more diligent and more leadership and more management on what's going on in our town as far as the finances go. That's what I'm asking you. Okay. And one other thing, Beth. You guys just approved the snow and ice deficit last meeting. You didn't even, did. you didn't even question it. You just, just approved it. So, hang on a minute. I'm speaking. You made a the, the advisory board. I know the advisory board does no longer have to approve it because they passed that state law a year ago, whatever. So they don't have to really review it. You know, that's what you thought, Beth. But they did pass. You know, they did pass that. So the advisory board doesn't even have to weigh in on it now. So, but someone should be doing a check and balance on something on our finances. Well, late town accountant did, because we talked to her about it. Right. Now, on a side note, and, and I didn't bring it up at the meeting, um, previous standard practice when they requested those extensions was to provide the, uh, and you're right, I wasn't aware of the fact that they changed the state law because I actually directed them to, to take it, or recommended right. to the board that they take it back. Right. Okay. Um, what I had also asked the highway to do, which was the standard practice, was to send a copy of their internal spreadsheet that shows why they're asking for um, that extension at the same time as the request. I don't know if they forwarded it to the Sleckman's office, but they copied me when they sent it to Steve Gillis. No, but um, we did get a copy no. of the balance. That's yeah. what right. was Right, and, and, and her balance agrees with the accountant's balance, okay? Yeah. So, um, we had gotten the high level number. I had asked for the detail and that detail was sent to the advisory board so that they would be aware of what areas that funding was sent. So there was due diligence, it just maybe wasn't as transparent as it could have been. The advisory board hasn't met in almost two months. So I can't speak to that. I do know they have a meeting so scheduled tonight. I'm just, I'm just concerned the way, the way we're running our finances up here. You say we're, we're all working hard, but I just want to see some good results is, right. what, I'm, so is just, what I'm asking just, for. Well, I understand that. So what I'm saying is that while it may not have been intuitively obvious from that meeting, mm -hmm. in the background there was some accountabilities in place regarding why that request was going mm -hmm. forward and where the money has gone. So okay. just because it, it didn't come across that way. Well, it should be not only the money, Beth, but it should be why are we, why are we in that deficit? Why are we having this much, why are we having this much money spent for, for the snow and ice. Well, that, Why, that's, what what you get, that's what you get from the details that show the materials 
the repairs and the work, but I don't want to extend okay. this, so we'll move okay. on. All right. All right. Thank you, Linda. All right. Okay, our next one we're going to move on here is from James Sniffin, his request for minutes. Do you want to come up, James? I think it's beat up everybody on Thursday then, huh? Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. So. I'm having trouble connecting to Check your Wi Fi. Everybody is aware of my town government website, right? So we yeah. see all the minutes, I mean, all the meetings. Okay, so a while ago I went on there and I wanted to check and see what the um, minutes were for public access. So I noticed that there were some meetings that were held, but I couldn't read the minutes. So I said, okay, well I'll just email Chairman mm -hmm. and say, you know, can I have a copy of the minutes? That's all. I copied all of you from the beginning. So all of you know what's going on, correct? That sound correct, everybody? Yes. Okay. So I emailed Sharon, December 11th of the 17th. I let a couple weeks go by. Mm -hmm. Everybody's busy. I get that. I'm busy too. So not a big deal. Um, but no response. December 24th of 17, I sent another email. Same email, just saying second request. Now by this time, I had a conversation about, with Clarence on the phone about another issue and we just happened to talk about that. So Clarence said, you know, he talked to Sharon about that, mm -hmm. which he did because he called me the following day. It might have been the following day or the day after and said, hey, you know, I had a chance. Okay, good. Not a problem. Time still went on. A third request went out on January 9th of 18, 2018. Still nothing. Here we are at the fourth time requesting minutes. Okay? Um, I'm sure everybody's aware of the open meeting law. We all know what that is. Do we also know that their law requires the existing minutes be made available to the public within 10 days of a request? We're now on the 51st day. Okay? Again, I understand we're all busy. The meetings were held, so we have the minutes. In the email, if you all remember, because you, you were all copied, mm -hmm. that they could be attached to an email, they could be sent to my house in the regular post office, or if it was easier for her or whoever on the board to drop my, my house, that's fine too. No big deal. But it's 10 days after request, not 51. 3.49 this morning, I get an email from Sharon. I got all the minutes. But at 3.49 this morning, there was a lot of thought that went into this email. Which is okay. Gives me a little bit of an update. What's going on? Because I'm very concerned what's going on and what's not going on. This is okay. Now I got the minutes. I've already reviewed uh, the minutes already. I've got to review a couple more. Um, which is fine. However, I should have got this in December, not 51 days later. So and just a quick question yes. on open meeting law. Yes. Is it 10 working days? It does not say that. It says 10 days of request, okay. whether they have been approved or remain in a draft form. It doesn't right. matter. It doesn't say business days. It says only 10 days. Um, I also blame the board because you all knew from the beginning. So you all knew, you all could have said, hey, by the way, did you do that? Now this isn't just because it's me, this can be anybody in town for any meeting. Anybody can request copies of the meeting, or whatever, if, uh, if it's been held. And there's minutes. So I get, I'm concerned, like I said, because, um, You 
you could make a big deal that this is violating the meeting law. I really don't care about that. I'm just making that as a statement because it should be 10 days. Well, um, I don't know if you're aware, we have a public records officer now. And if you had an employee, you should have notified probably the public records officer and she could have well, got them. Right, though the, so, the, probably the communication opportunity yeah. for us would have been to redirect them to the public records yeah, officer. Yeah, that's what we should have done. And, and I know that I made one inquiry as well about the status of this in that time frame, and I didn't necessarily communicate back to you the fact that I had made the inquiry to and Correct. said that, yes, indeed, the minutes are moving along and it's getting put into a final format versus mm -hmm. being chicken scratch. So. So you're right, but there was some missed right. opportunity of communication. The only okay. communication I got was from Clarence, and right. like I said, I happened to call Clarence on something else, right. and we just happened to talk about it. Right, because I followed all. up after your January 9th email and and kind of included some, some input on don't sweat the format so much, just make sure that the that, that the notes go out. So Correct, and that's what the open meeting law says. Whether yep. approved or in draft form, it doesn't really matter. So if this happens another time, you should probably go to the public records office. And um, it's a 10-day request. And she, what she will do is, I mean, she has to charge you for, how, for the copies. That's and, fine. And also uh, how long it takes her to get these. And it's the lowest and, uh, paid um, person here in the building. Mm -hmm. Regardless, if it was the lowest paid or the highest mm -hmm. paid. That that does not matter. That's immaterial. What it has to do is it has to go by the, the open meeting law, which says ten days. Yeah. I, I, if I there's a process, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Every, like I said, everybody's busy. Right. Offices are busy. That's fine. I, I think you one know. of the things we need to do, and, and and we need to concede that. As a town, this is something that has been a challenge for us. I don't remember when, what back in like August when you had been out for a while, weren't we behind even with Selectman's meeting minutes right. publication mm -hmm. by like close to three months, okay? Yeah. Not making an excuse that that's right. What I'm saying is that it's something that holistically we're starting to work on. We've been starting at the top. Now we're approving minutes at the Selectman's meeting and setting a good example for the other boards and committees by getting ours published now a week later and have it be the fully published minutes. Okay, now that we're actually in better compliance, I think we're in a position to start to ask all of the, the committees to get better at publishing the minutes to the to the website. So so here's what I want to propose. And that's good. Okay. And hopefully everybody will follow soon. Right. right. So, so I think the first thing that needs to happen yeah. is we have the most support of anybody. All the other committees in town are run by volunteers and we all know. Right. I had this conversation with a young lady down at the uh, transfer station who was with the Girl Scouts the other week. And you know the people who get involved in stuff are the people who are involved in everything. So the, the people who are at least trying to support the town generally are the folks that are the most time constrained yet they're doing that anyway mm -hmm. okay so I think so so, <coughs> so the piece that I'm just saying is that let's let's get a communication out my recommendation to the board would be let's get a communication out to all the chairs about hey reminder about open meeting law reminder about if the if the minutes aren't in a approved format that they at least need to be available in a draft format so that in the future, regardless of the committee, if this type of request goes forward, that they'll understand to at least, you know, scan your agenda with your handwritten notes and send it. Sure. That's all you got. That's sure. all you got. But respond. And if the town has a public information officer, that's good. Yeah. They don't have to be. At least this is my opinion. I mean, if you can't get them up on to my town government, as long as it's somebody has access, access to, it. to it. So like I said, this is just me. Can you right. just imagine if somebody else? Is yeah. wanted to do the same thing for any other kind of meeting, right? And you're going to have them here. To be honest with you, I didn't want to come this far. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm willing to go even further, but I got what I requested for. Not in a lot of time, but I got what I requested for. But I should have got it sooner. Sooner. Can get it. So okay. Mr. that's Snyder what I'm saying. Would like to Go so, so I think well, it's important that we understand, and, and in fact, the best suggestion is a good one as far as reminding people of timeliness and, and the like. But I guess I get back to our conversation when we did have that conversation, and I think it's important, and, and we're on camera and the town's hopefully watching, that, that in fact the real root cause is time, mm -hmm. volunteer time. And I get what, that. And what, and I appreciate that. Yeah. 
what, what I, I'm not necessarily speaking to you at the moment yeah. through the chair yeah. to those folks on the on the camera that are watching this thing that in fact we need additional resources we are short staffed in the area that you came to ask questions mm -hmm. about uh, fortunately we do have or you do have the information that you're looking for that's great uh, again time one is an issue but again it comes to people's time mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that it really was us to ask of the town uh, for support for this committee as well as others that are short staff. Yeah. There's I, only three of them down there. Right? I know, and, and I was just going to say that. I know it's only. On meetings, you know, we'd like some I understand that. I've, I've been there, so I understand that part. My c biggest concern is there was no response. So now I have to start to think okay, so these four meetings, not including the fifth, but if you want to go with these four meetings now, are they following the open meeting law? Are they discussing things that shouldn't be discussed outside? I still have to kind of think that the last meeting was in June of, of uh, I'm sorry, June of 27 of 17. That's eight months from then till now. So I have to now I have to really have to think, well, geez, there's been no meetings, but there still has to be discussion. So now I have to so, again think, are, are we still so violating the open meeting law to a point? That's not necessarily a concern if there's been no policy discussions that related. We don't, that we know of. We don't know that. Right. But there has to be some kind of discussion going right. on here. Like Sharon says, I'll do this meeting. Danielle says, I'll take care of this. Kevin says, I'll do this. So there is, there is a discussion going on. Whether it violates the meeting law, I don't know. That could be another debate. But yeah. I'm not going if, down that you, yeah. road right now because okay. I got what I wanted. Okay. Well, well, actually, what I requested. Right. So we're okay. But this is something I think about. Like I said, I want to know what's going on. I also want to know what's not going on. People talk to me, and what can I say? Sure. I, we understand so, what you're saying. For and, and you all know I, I'm in law enforcement now, so I have to have an open mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's tough sometimes. I have to hear both sides. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm trying to do, too. Right. That's all. So like I said, you know, people talk to me, yeah, oh, okay. But I got what I wanted, so actually I got what I requested, sorry, keep wording it that way. Okay. But I'm okay with that. It's just the the length of time that has taken to get this. And, and through the chair, I'll go back to Clarence's point, which is most of the people that we have involved right now are very time limited. So, um, in fact, one of the sure things I, I had wanted to bring up, uh, on, and we can bring it up under other, is, uh, is just talking about um, a couple of citizens have come to me with some ideas on how to get more people involved and engaged, and I wanted to bring those to the board. And, so. and that's okay, but we can't be using volunteerism <laughs> as an excuse all the time. It, it, only, it only takes five minutes. I can't get to the meeting minutes right now. Give me a couple of days. Something like that. Uh, understood. Okay. Like I said, the, ten, the communication could have been better. I'm not. I didn't say that. Ten minutes this morning. Look, uh, that's she took a lot of thought into that, and I know Sharon. She writes emails like this because when you know when I was on Cave Laxus, her and I emails are like this. Okay. And that's okay. I just don't want to say what you just said is they're short staff. This committee short staff. Right. You, we can't be you can't be playing that card all the time. I you understand can't. what you're saying, but like I said, the first the first step is, like you said, and like I said, I missed an opportunity because I had followed up on yeah. it and probably had more information than you about when you could expect it, and I didn't share it because I missed bringing it up at the last selectmen's meeting, and we try not to operate too terribly independently with some of the communications mm -hmm. back related to complaints, okay, or questions. Mm -hmm. All right. So missed opportunity on my part, I'll raise my hand and say that. Um, and I guess all I'm asking is that first, understand we're taking it, or at least I'm taking very seriously what, what you're saying, 
but I think the first step is we've cleaned up our own house in-house with the with the board of selectmen and getting more time with the minutes so now let's give us some opportunity to communicate that that's the standard for the town is what that's, I'm asking that's fine for. that's fine. Okay. like I say hopefully other committees will will follow suit right. and, and that, that'd be fine you know so um that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Um, I'm, gl I'm glad it didn't go any further. Um, now we'll just continue on and we'll see how it goes. Well, thank you for your all concerns. Right. And Sharon, do you have anything to say on that? No. No? Okay. All right, thank you for coming no up. No problem. Now I can go to bed. <laughs> thank you. Oh, yeah, oh you work I had third seven. shift? Yeah, I worked third shift. That's uh, Okay, now we have. Thank a, you. I did that for a few minutes. No, but we have the written communication from him, so we can <clears throat> we can cover his topic. Yeah, I had. Um, and we also had a separate. I sent a note through as well. I had a chance to, to chat with him, tell him about his concerns. Yeah, I chatted with him too. Great. Okay. Well, he had talked to me. One of the one of the big concerns that he has is that some different people aren't um, going to attending the meetings. Right. I know. I've only been making it yeah. about fifty percent. And, and this is, and, you um, know, this is what he's um, very concerned about. Right. All the time. And so I told him that I would talk to the different ones that aren't, you know, making the meetings. Yeah. And he just wants to know. Uh, another concern he has is expenditures the next five years and he'd like to have that before May 1st. Well, right. I think one of his concerns actually was that um, according to our bylaw, the, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee owes a capital plan to the town in the month of February. So what he's asking for, because we got a little bit of a late start because we had to reform the CIPC and because we have had, you know, uh, attendance issues and some snow days and then um, uh, some of the information came back but it came back really yeah. pretty late it came back mm -hmm. like late January yeah. is to just ask that we vote to extend to May 1st that deadline for the capital plan because that way they feel they can have something fully formed together um, and yet that should be plenty of time presuming we do our annual town meeting in June to not just present the capital improvement plan to the select board and perhaps through a, a separate public meeting but also have it available for them to brief at the annual town meeting so and then the other day when i also met with him uh, kerry came in and on, he wanted to know here on the second question would the uh, anticipated completion of the town's financial reconciliations and uh kerry explained that to him and she he understands much better what's going on good because I had, I had given him the same explanation I'd gotten yeah. from Carrie but I think getting it from the horse's mouth yeah, she was probably came, yeah, she came in. was probably good so I had actually recommended me first and further because the practicality of this thing is that the, the information is not necessarily required much before May May right whether February is correct or not, we don't have all the information in February, just like we don't have information for town meeting. That's why town meetings now move to June. Right. So, right. It's, it's, right. so that I had suggested, again, an April, May timing. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad to see the May 1st timing. Uh, I think the other piece was that I think we should come away from today to support the uh, committee as far as receiving the uh, wants and needs yeah. that in fact the asset uh, there's a couple of holes in yep. the asset report yeah. i think madam chair if you would uh, express to the dif different departments their need to uh, fulfill the uh, asset yeah. uh, listing to make sure that it's yeah. clear mm -hmm. and then the second piece to that is that if there are capital wants and needs of the departments that those departments provide that to the capital committee yeah. such that they have one the inventory in hand and then two that and again i would think the inventory in hand isn't changed very much from last year to this year so it can't be that much to be able to say what that inventory is and then the second piece to that is that in fact if there are capital wants and needs over the next five year 
that the department heads provide that information mm -hmm. in as timely a manner as possible. Yeah, that's something yeah. I had discussed with <coughs> the other day, and he said he wanted the wish list from the different departments, and yeah. we discussed that, and I thought, you know, I thought he would be in here this morning. Yeah. Yeah. A, a, a lot of it has come in yeah. in pieces, mm -hmm. because, and it's even since some of these conversations, because I know I saw Thanks. some traffic to the full uh, some some traffic because they'll they'll send out info, as we get data they'll send it out to the committee mm -hmm. members but we won't discuss it until the actual meeting um, and I know that different portions in different departments have come back and mm -hmm. we have uh, some of that information for homework for the February meeting um, so I, I think there is some traction in that information coming but um, to uh, to Kermit's point and as um, we as a board of selectmen haven't necessarily um, talked about some of the higher level ones that we might have because I know um, we're having some struggles with our ancient phone system. I know that um, the CIPC had asked me about finding out if Larry could at least pro provide a recommended IT upgrade plan so that we could have a, a little bit of a roadmap instead of just uh, replacing stuff as we go or as it fails. There's a number of times when I walk through the office where people complain about the the capabilities of the computer systems that they have right now and, and just to, to get a feel for what he feels as our IT professional, what ought to get replaced over the next five years and what, what might not. And if I recall in the contract with him, um, though I know we didn't fully fund the contract for this year, part of that, of the level of service described in this contract is to kind of provide recommendations about how to replace What he has been doing, because I know that there was a suggestion by someone on the CPIA committee that they wanted to go out and spend a hundred thousand and buy all new computers and you know where's this money going to come from? So what Larry's been trying to do every time somebody has a problem, he if the high drives go, He's able to get some other ones in place, and he's doing the best that he can, and he's trying to save the town some money. Well, well, I'm not saying that he's not. What I'm saying is that I think that the, I think we just need a discussion around the approach that we may have have been too aggressively frugal in in some instances. Mm -hmm. And, and honestly, I, I I I already voiced my opinion on the replace everything tomorrow uh, suggestion that came out during the CIPC. Um, but uh, which is that we're not necessarily in a position to do that and it's not that critical, but somewhere mm -hmm. in the middle between those two approaches mm -hmm. is probably what will get the townspeople the best service for their money. And, and I think that's really the question is, we've been limping along doing as little as possible for a while. We've done some replacements in the past, okay? In a perfect world, we'd replace everything yeah, yeah, and get the yeah. newest, the best, and the brightest. The reality for the town is something on the spectrum between the two, and we would just like his input about what's smart. You know what I'm saying? From a from a committee standpoint, that's that's really and what the like you say. We did get we did get computers in a grant, but all these were they were referred as computers. They're not they weren't new computers. Right. If you were led to believe they were right. So so now that now those even are probably three to five years old oh, from when they were refurbished. Yeah. So we just, and that's the whole point of this committee, is to look at what are the needs and wants, to use your term, oh, okay? I and then we, we know we're not gonna be able to fund it all, but what makes sense to fund? So so I think that's the support they're looking for from us. Um, so, uh, go ahead. Madam Chair, through, uh, item three, uh, I think is important to, to consider as yeah. to, uh, Again, these meetings can be offline. They don't have to be. We do not have to be party to them. But there's some th certain th certainly uh, things that need to be considered. Again, the whole idea of, of this idea of a developer position to go out for grants and the like. There are grant monies that are available. As late as yesterday, I received another uh, request related to what we might be able to do for the campground. We'll have a meeting on the 13th. We'll decide what what possibly we'll do with the, with that. Through the month of February and into March, we'll have this open and rec plan sure. development. Again, the good news is that the uh, assembly of that document will not be paid for by the town. The, the town has a grant or will receive a grant uh, to complete the work. We've had free service up to this yeah. point to gather that information. There are many of these things that are out there and available to the town. And again, his uh, 
Kermit's suggestion to meet with Mr. Arsenal is a good one as it relates to, uh, to potential funding uh, sources. Again, we're not leveraging our debt. I mean, we don't have, essentially don't have debt. We don't have a lot. No, no, we've done a, a, an excellent job, if we look at the police station as an example, an excellent job in, in how to fund that. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I think we need to explore uh, further what, what debt service is, mm -hmm. what, what's appropriate for the town, yeah. and to go forward. I'd even go back to the uh, uh, Preservation Act. Uh, again, we chose not to do that as a town years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need to reconsider that, especially as it, as it relates to where our tax rate is uh, and now going forward as to whether or not there's room to be able to do that because if there's that work to be done, um, those were matching funds mm -hmm. that we could, we could go after. But the past few years, though, I don't think it's been like 100% reimbursement. It's oh, less. I, all I'm saying is yeah. It, reimbursement is, means that the town isn't providing those dollars. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd go back to the three houses that we're now still waiting from the town's attorney to tell us that we can in fact tear those three places down. The town's going to pay for that in total, 100 percent. Yet we had, we, uh, again, the town decided, and again, I, that's the decision to decide, but we did not take advantage of the attorney general's uh, abandoned housing uh, a, a, no. initiative, so therefore we will pay 100 percent well, for the removal. The Board of Health didn't want to. That was a decision that was made, and I think we need to revisit it. And again, I, I would then look to the Capital Committee for recommendations to the Board of Selectment and further to the town mm -hmm. as to what the appropriateness is of, a, of obtaining mm -hmm. funding outside of the town's resources. Thank you. Okay. We're all set then. We want to move on yep. to our next one. It's, the next one is the 90-day um, review we call of the that. treasurer. Oh. Oh. Okay, um, we're ready for you guys. All right. So did you want to make a motion to extend that deadline to May 1st? Or you didn't really make a motion? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I'll make, the, okay, I'll make the motion to accept the recommendation of the uh, Capital Improvement Committee to move their report to May 1st. I'll second. Um, what are you calling that report, by the way? Capital, Capital Improvement Plan. Um, okay. Come in, come in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Hey. Okay, good morning. Have a seat. Here. 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 And this morning we realized we were a little late with our 90 day review, so we want to get it done. And maybe before we start, I have um, a letter here to the Honorable Board of Selection. This letter is to support Lenny Krasia and commend her for her progress in her position as town treasurer. In many interactions with Lanny, I have found her to be always helpful, conscientious, and a team player who goes the extra mile to get the job done. Several employees and residents have remarked on how Lanny's excellent communication skills and willingness to aid the public. She always is eager to tackle the challenges that come her way and is a pleasure to work with. I look forward to working with her for many more years. Sincerely, Michael P. Seri, Town what? Nice. That's right. Thank you. <coughs> okay, we want to start some questions and how things are going. Well, one of the first things, I, I got a few questions too. One of the first things I'd like to ask, Lani, is um, how did you feel about being appointed as the treasurer as you begin your work uh, and as you begin your work as official of the treasurer? Um, very exciting, actually. I, um, it's a very challenging uh, position and department, and I'm so up for this challenge. Um, it's when I was appointed, I was um, in tears because um, just so happy about it, and kind of proud of myself, and thankful that you all um, have a little bit of uh, faith in me for this position. Okay. 
we want to start out with some other questions? If I could? Yes, sir. Back, back to the, with some formal training that was going to be right. conducted? Yep, formal training. Form, yep. Formal training. Yep. So where are we with the formal training? Okay, so <clears throat> I've already taken one uh, section of the um, treasurer collector's class, which happens once a year. Yep. I have been to um, Worcester Retirement for a class. Um, I am actually at the MMA last weekend, or the weekend before rather, I was um, in touch with the VADAR system because they had a booth set yep, up there. Yep, so yep. I spoke with Frank and Ted and um, discussed with them that I would like them to come in because um, with the whole VADAR system, even though the financial team works as a group with it, there are certain uh, requirements that the treasurer's position has to enter the information. And um, they're going to come in and hopefully we're going to actually all get together as a whole financial team group. Yeah. And then what will happen is, is it'll be like a couple hours spent with the treasurer, with the um, accountant and then uh brenda and so on and so forth and then as a whole group we'll be able to kind of get a gist of what each department does but um there's going very smoothly for the uh sections that i enter right now and deal with what sections are those that is entering turnovers and running reports off of them so the deposits that we go to the bank they then in turn get put into the system and then submitted to accounting. Now, is is the submission to accounting occurring within the VADAR system, or is that one of the things you, that you feel needs to get worked out with VADAR as to how to get the, the electronic transfers or the electronic record uh, alignments uh, more clear? Well, here's the thing with that, right? It's getting submitted to the accountant. Okay. It's getting submitted the way that um, it was taught to me on how it, the accountant way it should be done. Okay. But in speaking with Vader, this is where I'm talking about how there is a specific way that the treasurer's end of it is actually gets entered a little different. Okay. So that's what Ted and Frank and myself will be working on. I think back in October, November, we as a, as a, as a board voted to go ahead and authorize them to fund with, from within their um, department um, expenses to bring in VADAR for a day. So you're saying now that that is going to get scheduled? Yes, actually, Ted and I were on the email together yesterday. As okay, to he's going to call me sometime. So we discussed that. I had discussed that with him the other day. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so to come back to the formal, so we've done a bunch of formal stuff. Is there formal stuff in front of you that needs to be done? What do you mean by that? Additional classes, certifications. Oh, I think any time that any of the agencies that I deal with has a class or a seminar, I think it would behoove myself as well as the town that I attend. Okay. So it's just a constant learning and any items that might change. Or, so right now there's no classes coming up presently. Okay. Are you currently on the Department of Revenue mailing list? for the local services so that you, you get some of the real-time updates of information? Are you familiar I'm with what sure I'm talking about? I'm sure she is, because we are. Should be. I know I get them at home. Okay. I'm sure uh, she so is, we because we get them. Yeah, let's, let's double check that, okay. that they're coming to your... Keith, do you have some different things that you'd like to add? Uh, I've got a couple of things. Um, I do want to say <coughs> I'm happy to hear that the Board of Selectmen is supportive of, of personnel going to training because the Board of Successful Organizations do have well-trained personnel. Uh, on the flip side, those that don't encourage it have problems. So that's I, I recommend all kinds of education she can get in, you know, whatever she can also with networking with other treasurers. She can learn just as more, mm -hmm. you know, just as much. And you know, she has a problem. She can call one of the neighboring oh, treasurers. Yeah. They'll help her out. That's good. Um, the VADAR system is a pretty decent software system, and it's well integrated mm -hmm. here. And I, I think the training will help to refine everybody's skills. Yeah. One thing that I would ask. Um, when you have VADAR on site is that 
you know, it's it part of it is training, but sometimes they actually have to change stuff up structurally in in order to get the different portions of Vader to mm -hmm. talk to one another. Mm -hmm. Let's make certain that based on how we want to do business as a town, that while they're on site, they identify any of those areas where there may be an opportunity to to create, sometimes in software it's referred to as a workflow, mm -hmm. uh, where they can set up automated workflows to make sure that, that the right um, portions of each record gets to the right departments. Um, because a lot of people don't take the time up front when they get systems like this to, to set those up in a way that actually works for the, That's for the process. A lot of people go as far as what they can do to get their particular task accomplished and, and they don't do the best. Yeah. So. Um, one of the things I've spent uh, doing over the past six, eight weeks is uh, refining the tax cycle. Uh, VADAR has a module in there and there's no reason why it shouldn't be used. Uh, the former treasurer had started the process, but then it got dropped and um, it was a challenge trying to pull all the information I'm sure. From wherever yes. Excel spreadsheets mm -hmm. and records and what's emails your, probably and uh, uh, what was recorded the registry deeds and stuff. So I think at this point in time we're almost 100 percent accurate. And the uh, the other thing that we did that uh, was what you just mentioned is now the tax collector can transfer all the subsequent year mm -hmm. right into the system. Okay. Uh, and I work with Beta Arda. Make sure we got the correct stuff. Um, I can give you copies. That would be fabulous. Yeah. Because um, I know that I know that that's been a question that's been asked from multiple sources, including CIPC has been asking for some visibility on what what we have out there. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Well, okay. and of course, if you look at the lower right hand corner, if you could collect. Oh, we don't have total, oh, but it's. I think oh, yeah, I have your yeah, no, yeah. okay. Yeah. So if you look in the lower right hand corner, that's the actual total amount that everybody paid. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. It's not going right. to happen. No. In fact, if you also look in the right hand column, it says F O R E, mm -hmm. which is just a short uh, foreclosure. Sure. So those are the cases that are currently in land court. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look down at the bottom, almost in the middle there. Uh, there's more in foreclosure, principal in foreclosure, yeah. than they're actually outstanding. One of our tasks over the next month is to start sending dunning letters out to people, uh, finding out what their intent is, and then perhaps we can tr refer some of these cases to the town's attorney and continue the process. Um, I think it's a mistake to let the cases get too old before you start the foreclosure because people disappear and gets a little challenging. But uh -huh. I think overall, you're not in too bad of a, a shape here. Um, the second from the top line, there's a person who's been on a payment plan. Uh, so they're almost uh, going for that. We also, with, with the end of the we found a couple of old cases that I'm sure have been put in the archives in Land Court of Boston and they need to be well, and, 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 and actually, Karen, can you double check in your email? Because I think KP at one point sent us a list of what we had in Land Court and yes. make sure do, yeah. do you yeah. have that list? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying there are ones that aren't on that list mm -hmm. and uh, are before KP was engaged, it was another term attorney. Ooh, that's old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes back what? That's gotta go back ten or twelve years. years. Uh, maybe even longer than that. Yeah. Uh, so those are actual cases that they don't file without any action. We yeah. Buy them. Yep. So again, what we learned in the last three, the transaction of the three houses that we were looking to tear yes. down, we learned that uh, 30 days is not 30 days that uh, we started the process in September and we're now February 1st <laughs> and we still haven't had uh, legal approval to move forward. So uh, I think that going back with the town attorney and again, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. to, to strengthen the board's resolve as it relates to the town's attorney and their processing. If you find that they're not processing or the timeliness is not there, I think you need to make sure that we know mm -hmm. so that we can in fact uh, push because again, 
to have the numbers of things on that list from the original list mm -hmm. that they provided us to now see this list, mm -hmm. it says you got a lot of work ahead of you. Yeah. And, and as a lot of work, on the flip side, we may not be able to collect what's on the lower right, mm -hmm. but we can bite into this thing sure. to have some additional yeah. resources. Yeah. And at some point in time in the future, you can take a look. Uh, one of the other things I'm to do is, is to create a list of uh, town owned properties hey, that, that came through the foreclosure process. And then this board can decide whether they are of sufficient value to hold it actually yeah. and try to recoup some money acting mm -hmm. that. Um, there is a property here okay. that has 21 issues. That was the question I was going to ask you. Was yes. What is 21A? Brownfield. Uh, uh, Petroleum. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Brownfield. Brownfield. Yeah. Um, so the well, and, and recognize that that is part of the CBG that's, yeah, initiative that's, that's, that's going that's on specifically, right now. That's specifically part of that recent grant approval was to get a plan together because it's the we've got a plan funded to um, to draft something to remediate. It's not actual funding of the remediation, though. Correct? No, it's, a, it's, it's just to well, develop the plan for remediation. Specific to that, if you look back a year ago when we looked at this list. There were three properties that were the highest uh, on highest priorities. This yep. being that property being one of those properties, there wasn't much that we could do. We uh, initiated an effort with Mass Development as far as available dollars to take the, for cleanup. Yep. What it needed to be done was that there were two reports. One report suggested that there was something like forty thousand dollars worth of additional cleanup that would be needed. We've learned now later that there, in fact, and that's why we're now moving with the CBDG thing, is that, in fact, there may be no cost to moving forward for the completion of the cleanup other than paperwork. At the same time, there was a report that's hung out there that talked to, that was in the matter of hundreds of thousands of dollars to clean up. Mm -hmm. and, and that, yet, because of the CBGG work, we will in fact be able to learn whether it's yeah. Which one zero, it 4,000, or 400,000, <laughs> but at least we'll be able to do that so right. that this particular property could come off the rolls and, and be repurposed. Se the second mm -hmm. property that was on this list as far as the numbers of dollars was in fact the campground property yeah. on February 3rd. Right on February, well, there's one property left. Yeah, the right the, the, town, the town, <laughs> town attorneys still haven't fo followed through. It's been now years, mm -hmm. and so that as we look to the campground, we have to. We'll have this meeting on the 13th as far as the next thing that we might be able to do with it. But again, now we've learned that it's in fact a cemetery and a very old cemetery okay. and so the chance of the town ever repurposing that is probably still in one none mm -hmm. and again we need to agree to agree that that's the reality and that the townspeople agree but it may be a dog park and so again unfortunately we, as you suggested we would not be able to collect everything at the bottom that particular property uh, we will not be able to it would be my thought as i move forward in this this role is to work with you in a, whatever manner i can work uh, to take the next three and figure out who they are and figure it out and let's get going. Yeah. Because if, it, if it, it, it's been September to now to get rid of three buildings, maybe we can take the next ones and it won't take us that kind of time. Mm -hmm. The result. Thank you. Good. This is excellent. Yeah, I know. I've, as I've been looking it over, I know a lot of these have been in, like you say, tax Long time. for many, many years. Yep. Uh, so the good thing about having this up to date is now as payments come in, uh, Lonnie can enter them into this and then uh, it creates a report and then that's what's put on the turnover for the deposit of money. So we're trying to get the system to have all the information in it. And then that way when the question comes in of what's our status, it's, it's easier. Do you know if there's any way because um, I appreciate the notes that you all provided as well uh, with regards to that. But is there any way to talk to VADAR about allowing a comment field or if there's something built into the system for the reporting to where we could actually incorporate that more formally and save you all the... Yes, the, okay. yes there is. Great. Yeah. This, this is a, a sample of an individual account that's on the list. Oh, uh, the the show was done at the top the years that were certified to the mm -hmm. tax level. And then this person made 32 payments over the past two years. Great. 
Well, that's the reason the tax rate has, in fact, gone down. <laughs> a piece of it. A piece of it. A piece of it. Okay. Um, do we want to move on to some different things, like um, with, with the bank? Banking is concerned having to, like, gone to, you closed out a lot of the accounts, because I know there was, how many accounts when you first came on? There's still a fair number of accounts, but they've been commingled. Um, I'm sorry. Consolidated, so uh, Unibank is the primary mm -hmm. account that body works with. And when you talk about internal transfers, it's easy to fund a warrant bill. Correct, because <coughs> when you take money from the general fund account, you're only allowed federally to take um, transfer money out of it a certain amount of times per month. And with the flow of warrants being processed twice a week, that reaches the over limit. So what we did was we set up another account called internally our transfer account, if you will. <clears throat> so we're able to take up X amount of dollars from the general fund and put it into this transfer account. Transfer to, account. To allow and then we can split it out between the vendor or payroll or what have you. So it's streamlining the process better. Now does that align with like the US guidelines from the state as well? Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah. The good thing about Unibank is they're tuned into municipalities and they actually watch our accounts. So, if you get something strange, someone tries to present a bogus check, they're the first line of defense. And they're available all the time and amongst all the other agencies that I've reached out to. They're very, very helpful and very for the town. So, so I I have a question going forward. Uh, budget for the next fiscal year for you, the services that you're providing. So you've budgeted for yourself, obviously. But now back to the support and the, the continuing support. And I, I look forward to having that continuing yeah. support. Is that is that going to be in the budget for the next year? I would like to put it in the budget, yes. Is willing, as long as Keith is willing mm. to come in and keep coming. See, I thought this was going to be a 90-day appointment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's okay. Uh, no. If I can, if I'm of use and helpful, yes, I'm you have been happy to be here. Well, and again, I look at this list, and chipping away at this list right. means yeah. the taxpayer is not going to have to pony up. The, that, that taxpayer that's been able to be on time mm -hmm. is not going to have to pony up for this. Yep. And so the, the, that work is huge. So I do have a question around, though, like all of the like married accounts and the account consolidation. Um, my understanding is we're, we're just about, we're getting close to the point where we can get back into a cycle of regular reconciliation with mm -hmm. the accountants. Mm -hmm. My one concern, in, and I've seen it with a couple of iterations of new treasurers, is that um, some of the accounts and all these little accounts that are everywhere were created um, based off of like votes and revolving accounts and stuff that tracks back years. You're talking decades. about the accountants' accounts. Uh, well, no, it's kind of like the inter. I'm talking about like the interaction between the accountants' accounts and the treasurer's accounts. So mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we have like or had at one point, I remember at one point we had like 21 different accounts and I don't know if we're down, I'm hoping we're down from that at least. But uh, <clears throat> is that- talking bank accounts, physical no. bank accounts? Well, I'm, I'm talking about kind of both. It's- Well, it's, no, are you talking like 21 bank accounts where money's going into or are you talking about the accounts on like the no, warrant? No, I'm, I'm talking about the, both the, the individual bank accounts like where money goes in. Yeah. Okay. And then the, then the, Accounting lines related to some of the um, items that are not necessarily s operational budget lines, but prior year, like um, in some instances, certain accounts like the cemetery fund or mm -hmm. other revolving accounts, like some of them are linked to those revolving accounts. And, and I think at times in the past, that when they had like a project account, they actually set up a whole separate bank yeah. account for to, to receive that. Yes. And, and I'm just trying to <coughs> I'm just trying to understand that as we're doing this account consolidation, that mm -hmm. the that the communication has been 
um, clear and we've been reconciling both those virtual accounting accounts to anything that might have been linked to it physically. There are still a few bank accounts set up with minimal amount of money in them. Okay. Uh, as an example, there's one that's labeled a grant account. I think it has $2,500. Right, probably it. related to like fire or police or something. Um, there's probably no need to ha have a separate account. And that's one that probably, but it would have to be reviewed with the accountant first. Right, and we'd have to figure out that which... That could just go back into the general fund because yep. she's accounting for it separately. Yep. And there's no need for... Uh, and at this point in time, it may just be a general fund account. That right, that, that actually it. all of those funds have, have, have been it. allocated and, yeah. and closed out the grant. And I guess that's what my, my point is, yeah. is at, at what point are do we think we're going to be able to do that level account reconciliation between the, the treasurer and the accountant to try to clean it up, not just in the physical world of the bank accounts, but also mm -hmm. from a standpoint of the accountant. Right. Uh, we had a financial team meeting a couple weeks ago, and I, and I, I had said four weeks, but it may go beyond. But that. is it four weeks to start the process, and then, no, then no. or do no, you think four weeks to get get yeah. the actual reconciliation process yes. done? Okay. So say four to six weeks yeah. to give you some buffer. Right. Is that, yeah, I need is a little just, buffer. Is that is but, that fair? Yeah. That's okay. Fair. That's, All right. Uh, the tax title took a little longer than I thought it would. Oh, uh, I expect. Everything takes a little longer than all of us think it will. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm willing to accept that so long as there's is at least a plan and a schedule that I understand what the what the goal is. Yeah, there is another account that's labeled cultural council. There's no reason why that particular account can't be in with our trust funds. Okay. So at some point in time. So, so long as they never voted to do what REC did, which I think REC has a an offline account that they established a couple years ago. That that's separate of the the town funding, so. No, then that's fine. If we move it into the trust funds, we'll have it so long. And that's great. Yep. It's just <coughs> again consolidation. It's on the report. Yep. Absolutely. So, great. Um, so. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't want to. So, what what are some of the important goals that you feel for this new coming year that you want to do? <clears throat> so the payroll system. Um, due to requiring uh, reporting requirements to certain state agencies, mm -hmm. um, a lot of uh, in the payroll system, certain uh, screens, if you will, under each employee need mm -hmm. to be updated or certain information needs to be added. Um, there's a lot of information that comes from our payroll system that gets exported out into um, like Mass Teachers Retirement. Mm -hmm. So with going through all of this, I'm finding that a lot of things weren't entered or Part of it was entered, the rest of it wasn't. Mm -hmm. So I'm um, working with uh, Mass Teachers Retirement on that. I'm working with payroll on that. So we're going to try and get that to be a little more streamlined. And unfortunately, it's starting from the bottom up in one aspect with data entry and information required. But we'll get there. Is that something, because it's data entry, is that something that you could have someone in for a short period of time that would be familiar with that mm, so that it's probably, probably not you know, because okay. it, only because it depends on the state agency like where your retirement's going so understood yeah no, you want to be careful yeah. but I, yeah. exactly yep. I, I i saw in some of the some notes um with regards to um labor timekeeping it sounds like Harper's might have a tool that we could open up to the, is that something that could be opened up to the department heads to have them enter their time directly? Or is that something that just we print out a form for them in the format that it goes into Harper's and, and then it would be a centralized entry? Well, I actually have a call into our rep at Harper's because when I first came on, her and I were going to sit and have a, um, a class if you will, on how to go through the payroll system, but that wound up being with trying to fix some of the problems the day she was here. Yeah. So I, from what I've been told was there are, um, pay, uh, Harbors has their own 
I guess, time sheets, if you will, that can, certain information is on it, which then in turn gets entered by us. We might go that route. It's just at this point, sitting with our rep and going over that and seeing what works for us. If your office needs any support from this office to, to get folks on board mm -hmm. with some of the process improvements that you have in mind. We will be here to ask you. Please. Thank you very much. Because <laughs> we understand, for, for, uh, for Mr. Eaton understands, sometimes it can be like crickets dealing with the department heads. So, um, well, I don't think change is easy for anybody yeah. sometimes, especially when you've had a pattern. But right. it's just, I think it would, um, it would benefit the town. It would definitely benefit the agencies where money is dispersed to. And right ultimately benefit the employees to make sure that all their records are accurate. Yep. Now, yeah, because you're utilizing, because you found out that there's much more than the payroll system can do for you than what, what it was previously doing, too. Correct. Right? And same like with yeah. VADAR, there's just so many yeah. levels that you can delve into to better, yeah. but with going off subject for a minute, with trying to just keep the office running on a basic, steady, everyday process, these are all going to be projects, if you will, mm -hmm. but all good ones in the end. Yeah. Um, and weren't you going to come, try to come up with the, I know you talked about it, um, a same kind of payroll sheet that everybody should be using? I would like to. I know um, Holly and myself were discussing yeah. that, but okay. I do know certain departments have um, shift differential or other items mm -hmm. added or what have you so it'll we're going to sit with um, Harper's to see if they have a specific for either um, those types of departments or if there's one that everyone can use but you just don't fill in that information. And, and weren't you also, when I talked to you and, um, you and Holly, didn't you also say that some of some departments don't put out actually how many hours a week they're working and you wanted to see that too on there? Correct. Some Departments have a um, an amount mm -hmm. opposed to maybe not the hours yeah. and the rate. So mm -hmm. it's it's kind of all over the place. Yeah. But this is what we're trying. This is one yeah. of our goals to try and get it on one, the same page. One uniform sheet, so Correct. everybody is the same. Correct. Okay. Um, so. I mean, happy news story is that in in the past when we've had like a transition of treasurers, sometimes the communication with the school has has gone awry. Um, I, I haven't heard of any particular concerns um, with them in the last like four to six months. But do you feel that you have a good handle on kind of the unique requirements that are currently in both the school union contract and the police union contract and how to execute like against those items? Yes. Okay. Matter of fact, I was on the phone with the school this morning about just discussing certain information I'll need because of the export and, <coughs> and things like that. And they've been wonderful. Okay. I need to actually get with, with you all both once we get finalized because we're trying to get down into the last dregs of the police contract in the next couple weeks. So once we've got concurrence amongst the board, then I need to sit with you all to talk about the tactical of how to execute some of the stuff that's in there. Um, but uh, uh, like some of the questions that I've sent you offline mm -hmm. uh, related to that. But uh, from a standpoint of is, and I'm going to switch gears. I apologize. Um, on the borrowing stuff, mm -hmm. I, I know that we've we've provided some information about um, the payment the payment schedules and such. Um, one of the things I'd like to see come from the office, and I don't know your level mm -hmm. of comfort with it yet, Lonnie, and I think it's probably an area that you can help with, Keith, and mm -hmm. and may come as well from our financial advisors. Um, just making sure that we're being smart about both our short-term and long-term notes because I know some of our smaller loans might seem like they have higher interest because of the fact that they're a much longer-term loan and there may be some opportunity there to reduce our interest costs if we if we change our structure of those particular mm -hmm. notes. Well, um, so it. It, gets, it gets back to the levering, leveraging comment that I made earlier. Yes. We're not leveraging what we have. Exactly. So, so if you know, that, that's something I would like to get on both <coughs> the radar is that from the standpoint of like, 
education to pursue. I think that's an area that has been neglected in the town for many years. And if we can get smarter about how we're leveraging the right things for the right rates at the right time, um, and in conjunction with, with working with the CIPC around that, I, I think we'll get a lot of benefit for the town. Mm -hmm. What did you mean with the lack of education? Did you just say that? No, I said, I, I said that a focus for her future education might be in oh, the I levy thought you area. Said there was a lack I said there was a lack of attention to that oh, area. I thought you said education. No, no I, said, I said lack of attention. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have not, or in my opinion, based on what I've seen when I was on the advisory committee and since, is that we haven't, because we're so busy in the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. sometimes, and because we didn't have a CIPC stood up, that we didn't have people looking at the strategy that we were using with our borrowing, with how we handle our cash flows. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that it's important to just have it on their radar to, to get some education there, to start talking with the, the, the town yeah. financial advisor and, and all of that piece. Well, I think so. it's in concert with the treasurer's office, right. the advisory board, and the capital improvement yeah. so that we're all kind of talking on the exactly. same page and that we're all educated to the same level. Right. Right. So, but I, I kind of look to the treasurer to be the subject matter experts. And oh, absolutely. That information absolutely. Back in absolutely. In essence. Yep. So, um, Can I ask a question in that regard? Certainly. Uh, <clears throat> part of our capital improvement planning committee, we were talking we, in our, our memo we sent to you. We talked about getting together with the financial Clark Rawl, our financial guy, Keith mm -hmm. and Lani, the accountant. Uh, we'd be willing to initiate that process, and the advisory committee, we've already talked to them about that. We'd be willing to initiate that, or, or Keith or Lonnie can, to set up a uh, meeting. We could put a, an agenda together if you wanted us to do that, or do you want to take the lead on, on getting right, them? Would be, would, whether <coughs> the treasurers want to take the lead on yeah. it or not. Yeah, at this point in time, do you have um, uh, plans or, or hope to uh, do another capital project? Well, what we've done, Keith, at this point, we're, we're generating almost like a wish list from each department mm -hmm. of what they want. Yeah. And if you look at that very preliminary, uh, that wish list looks <coughs> like over the next five years, about $2 million worth of capital expenditures. Uh -huh. The second part of that is where this is this funding going to come from? Mm -hmm. And that includes the, the town meeting, borrowing. Uh, we don't even know what our bond rating is. If we have a bond rating, I don't think we, we have, have a bond one. rating. So we, we feel, in order to us to meet our obligations as a select board to get them the capital plan, we need to know the resources. Of, and so mm -hmm. um, we've used Clark Rowell in the past. Yes, and very sharp guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, in any event, somewhere along the line, we would... That's critical to our commitment to the select board to get them mm -hmm. the capital plan. So, how that's the question I guess I ask is who's going to initiate getting Clark and Keith and Lonnie and all of us together to help us out here? I look to you guys for your recommendation. Yeah, we can post a meeting. So, am I hearing that you, you guys will? I can call Clark. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that. That you want to bring Clark in until you have somewhat of a plan. Uh, your wish list, so to speak, is oh, firmed up just a little bit. Oh, yeah, we, we have, we have a job. capital plan. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we, 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 there's a couple of departments we haven't got finalized yet, but we have a... A, a good working draft, yeah. Yes, I, uh, and uh, so we can meet with you and Lonnie and, and go over that with you if you want. Uh, perhaps we should start there first. Yeah. Beg your pardon? We should start doing that first. Okay. And then uh, Lonnie and I can communicate with Clark. Good. And I know. I'm sure you'd be happy to come over and, yeah. and meet with people, but I just want to make sure we get to a point where it's worth having you come out. Yeah. He, he's been very cooperative in the past. So. Yeah. That'd be, that's excellent. Yeah. That's came up with a very unusual uh, method of financing the, the police station. Yeah. And of course with interest rates uh, very close to zero percent. 
Yeah, it's been relatively inexpensive for the town of Brookfield. I'm not sure what's going to happen going forward because, as you, as you know, that's rolled over every year. It's, it's not a bond, it's a bond anticipation note. And so if the feds keep pushing Fed rates up, the other interest rates are going to follow when towards the end of the project, it, the interest cost could be much higher. But it was an inexpensive way to borrow the money because you didn't have to go through a bond rate. Right I, I think it's been a while since the town had an audit completed, so that's a requirement of getting a bond rating. Yeah. So there's a number of things that need to be accomplished for us. From what I understand from the uh, accountant, she says as soon as you know we finish up with um, the audit that we're having done right now, mm -hmm. then Scanlon and Associates okay. will come in and do an audit. Okay, so that will be for fiscal 16. Yeah. Probably. 16 or 17? It'll be 17. 17. 17. Okay. Good. Okay. How, what's so, we'll, oh. we'll, we'll get that report. I can get it to you today. Okay. okay. So what is your overall case with Lonnie? How do you think she's doing? Well, I think she's not afraid to pick up the phone and call someone and Good. get something accomplished or ask questions. Mm -hmm. and, in this particular environment, sometimes you just have to take good people and train them to do yeah. what you need to get mm -hmm. accomplished. Well, that's the reality. Yeah, that's what it just saying. back to this role in the in the central Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. That there's just so few people yeah. that are capable yeah. and to be able to train somebody from the ground up. Yeah. And again, that's why I suggested earlier, with respect to your time and availability of time, mm -hmm. to continue this relationship so that you're you're fully strong and in. in yeah in that so capability like because yeah basically and and again i from my background in, in another environment it takes a year to 18 months to get somebody truly trained and capable mm -hmm. and so i i respect that i mean yes. and, and right. I'm not afraid of it but if you're not afraid of the work then it's you keep going it's, um, i have to say every agency that i've reached out to um be it because there were no passwords or from the ground up, essentially, they've all been so helpful and you can call them all the time and they're willing to walk you through it. And then even with networking with other town treasurers, I've done that as well. So. And I do have to say things every year to get more comfortable, no, sure. more sophisticated. It's like, uh, compare it with 20, 25 years ago where everything was done by paper and big books. And yeah, yeah we, we don't have a, a, a <laughs> green ledger with a cash book anymore. So and the green eye shade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, the no green ledger with the cash book. Uh, and the green uh, eye shade thing that the uh, bookkeepers used to do. One thing I wish we could do, I know we're limited around here for space. I wish there was something we could give a bigger office for Lonnie because that was where she is. That was that used to be a computer room years ago. We one of our treasurers just decided they were going to move in there because they needed a piece of quiet. So I just wish there was something we could do to get her some more space. I, I know we've oh. talked about, you know, dividing up the kitchen and things like that. Um, could be time. It, it, it either could be time or we could at least potentially get, um, there are some um, types of movable filing systems that could potentially fit where we have regular file cabinets that, that take up about three times as much stuff so we could at least potentially move like a lot of the files and the books and the stuff out of that space if we can't find an actual space mm -hmm. um, and just have it be in a, in a, a more user-friendly and, mm -hmm. and still not have it be far away but be able mm -hmm. to, to have stuff available at least close by and at least open up some of the space even in that room. Maybe moving Paul's stuff downstairs. Yeah, that was one thing. Paul's stuff downstairs, these things over into that corner. I mean, that's probably the most we could do in the near term. In the near term, yeah. But something like that could at least help because there's no, I mean, I, I'm sure Paul would probably be open to, to okay. helping with that. Well, I will say getting back to the goals questions is one of the goals is definitely to um, organize the office, the existing office. Um, I understand about the whole space and I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, 
There are uh, files to go through. I know there's things that can definitely be put in archives and put under a lock and key elsewhere, which will help free up more room. Um, and then being in a very small room, there is a little bit of rearranging that can be done. But the goal is definitely to organize the office itself and the files and the computer system and everything in there. So that has been started. I was able to move my printer yesterday. Are you, uh, are you comfortable with all of like the, it, it sounds like one of your big focuses has been payroll so far. Um, are you comfortable with all of like the deduction stuff, the pay employee benefits and, and uh, um, like how we, how we manage any unemployment, you know, filings? Is, is all of that stuff that's, that's well within your wheelhouse now? Is it stuff you mostly delegate to the assistant treasurer? How's, how's that working? No, it's pretty much in my wheelhouse. Um, certain, every day something new could come in with regards to an employee. So if um, we haven't done it already, then we look into it and call that agency. And then if there's something that can be actually put on their specific paycheck or they need a new paycheck, we can call Harper's and they can help us out with that as well. Okay. So there's definitely people to reach out to that you have to anyway because you can't just do it. Yep. And that being said, though, um, they've all been very helpful and they're, they walk you through everything. Yeah. How, how is the turnover process from the other departments, whether it's tax collector or water or highway even? Is, are, is the paperwork flow with that working? okay? Is it another area where we need to work on? Um, I think that'll definitely be a little bit of a goal as well to maybe get a, a little more streamlined with the turnovers. I mean, right now, um, I did ask that um, you know, nothing be like, you know, an envelope be left with my treasure or with right. anything in it. So, <laughs> and everybody's been wonderful about that. Um, Do we need to establish a drop box or something? more secure? I'm not sure yet. This is something that we're still kind of thinking about because as well as the actual uh, handing in the money, it's also the form that it's handed in on. So um, I know um, <coughs> I've done some of my own for my turnovers that um, the accountant mentioned at one time that she kind of liked those a lot. So maybe we can work together to see if we can come up with one for everybody. Okay. Just to make it more streamlined and Great. Uh, I'm going to jump in. Yes. One of the things that the Board of Selectmen could help us with is the request to have the retirees health insurance withheld from the pension checks. Okay. Yeah, we're going to talk. We have that. We're going to talk about that. Oh, oh. And I did hand in the um. I had talked to the authorization about that. form. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we're just looking at different things to create efficiencies. Okay. Great. Excellent. And that way too, it's less, it's not a check mailed here, which is then deposited there. It, it's just, it's more streamlined, it's less steps, and it's more secure. Yeah, it'll make it much better, I think, even for the retirees. But we don't have to, because right now we have to be up here like the 15th of every month. Exactly. And it, it's coming out of the, it, when it comes out of the check, I think it's much like you said, streamlines the whole thing much better. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have any more questions or anything that you truly like to bring forward? Okay. Um, we talked about um, personal development, such as mm -hmm. going to classes in VR. Um, I think really that's about it. Oh, uh, procedures for the office. Um, as, well, as I'm learning whether it's the daily routine or something that happens maybe once a month or a loan that has to get paid every six yeah. months or what is it, um, I am writing procedures down as to how things are done and entered into the computer coming from very simply that, oh, I might get this in the mail or I might get an email received by such and such. So these are more uh, procedural opposed to um, Work instructions. That's work instructions. Yeah. Yes. Can yeah. You, do you mind passing yeah. a few across just so well, they understand? Well, they're all they're all different ones, That's but okay. hold on, I got to make sure. 
Starting to go uh, If there's any editorial comments, I won't share. Okay. <laughs> I'm not making sure my password's not on. I know I aligned, I mean, uh, cross staff once. Those are deductions. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and then the veteran forms um, were uh, hooked up with that. Oh, so no. yeah. the veteran agent and I sat together with Keith to um, get online with that. You ought to codify these so that. I ought to what? Codify. Well, again, fancy words. Yeah. All right. Don't so use the fancy words. It's too so, hard. What, okay, so back to you, you have a set of process instructions. We have Correct. a financial policy mm -hmm. document that, that has what I'll call processes. Okay. What you now have are work instructions. Mm -hmm. And what you want to do is to take these and put them in, in a form, uh, numbered and that sort of thing, yes. where from time to time you. you'll you'll then thumb through them to say that they're current, accurate, and complete. It, exactly. And then as things change or whatever, I do add them. And then also um, uh, binders, depending on which particular item it is, such as with the meals tax. Um, there's a whole process for that as well, and then there's just um, a binder for it, so it's easy to go to, and it's Excellent. everything from the daily checkoff list of how you handle that particular situation is going to be in that binder. Again, that's all part of the organiza sure. organization of the office, and, you know, it's because I'm writing these procedures down, it's just, again, from the bottom up going through. But it'll all get there. Glad to see those, actually. Yeah. Mm. It's good. Things, I think things are starting to get organized. Seems as though things are starting to get organized in the office now, much better than what we had before. It was, it was a little hectic. A little yes. hectic. Well, you to you say the least. You yeah. faced a huge challenge. You did. You Sandy, took me in the Sandy huge. was a good person and she worked very, very hard. And sorry for her loss. Mm -hmm. And and you you're picking up the ball and running mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, and, that, yeah. and you're working with folks and getting stuff done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We're very. I'm very happy with it myself. Thank things you. are going well, and I'm very grateful to Keith for coming out of oh, his retirement yeah. and his help and because he's a wealth of knowledge for all these years. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, it would be appropriate way to, because uh, we don't have a great standardized format on the standpoint of doing reviews. So do you, you want to just do a uh, separate uh, memorandum for sure time regarding the topics that we covered? Do you want to come in now? Um, well, I, 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 gotta, I gotta go home. I can draft it from my notes. Do you want to just email it? And we can do it an approval at the I'll next meeting. I'd like to bring it in. It should be it should be burned into it. So I'll get it tomorrow. Or you can just or you can just file it. I'll do it Tuesday. I mean, well, I understand. That's why I was yeah. saying okay, that we keep this here to work. Or if you need the minutes, and I'll take it from the minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah five or ten minutes. Yeah. Well, you go home, bring it to me, and then yeah. you can start explaining to me, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. All right. Okay. Deal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to our next one. Uh, Linda, can I apologize for not being oh, here? I, I had it on my <laughs> list for you. Or ten or eleven o'clock. I, so I fully I, accept your. <laughs> so I apologize. <laughs> we discussed. We discussed some of the things that you and I had talked about, and then some things that you had discussed with uh, Clarence and with Beth, and so we're pretty well. Okay. I don't know if we want him to the, add anything. Yeah. The only thing I guess is uh, if, if we're going to meet our. And thank you for extending the, mm -hmm. the deal. Yeah. If we're going to meet that, that's subject to us getting certified mm -hmm. numbers yep. Yep. to the accountant, and that's not her problem. Yep. That you know, it's that's uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. her. The other one is we need the select board's yeah. capital, capital plan. Yeah. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. ideally, yeah. could we get a commitment that you guys will have them to us by March first? I think we can do that. Yeah, we can. Sure. sure. Well, I, I, almost, right I almost think that we're looking at your inventory of one wants and needs to kind of share. See how much room is how much room is left for us is basically one of the things. Oh, oh, oh and how, how much money you got? No, no we, we'll, we'll never have the money. But 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 the thing is, and again, I'm sure, that you're getting an inventory. You've got some stuff missing from a couple of departments as yeah, I understand that's it. What we talked about the if if mm -hmm. you're looking for March first or whatever that is from us to back up to say what does that list look yes. like so that we can you know, the, the only thing I have on my brain, huge that's on my brain, 
is this building. Mm -hmm. And we just talked about a space yeah. for Lonnie. I mean, yeah. so, so that, that's something that I'd like to see what we could do to carve out that okay, piece. We, we, we have the, uh, from the committee, the town hall improvement committee, we got their numbers. Okay. Yeah. So what we're looking from you is, is our some, some things like the funding at the Adena site. Is there going to be money possibly? Uh, yep. Is there the Finney property? Is that is, a, is that a possibility? And again, it's it's just it's a it's a dream list. A little bit. So, the so, Finney property, though, that's where really, we're trying to get the grant for that again with the Brownsfield. To understand what we yeah. can or have what to do. Can. So, yeah. so we haven't defined it yet. It's not the, and again, back, back if I could explain that here and now, I think it would be important. Mm -hmm. As far as the Adena project or the campground, we on February 13th will go forward to say what the recommendations are. What I can tell you today is based on your input, we still have three buildings that need to come down. One of them seriously dilapidated yeah. and dangerous. So that that number was $12,000. What we've heard from the uh, archeologists and whatnot, as far as signage and trails and that, that sort of thing, is you're looking at another twelve to $15,000 or something in the order of about $25,000, just rough numbers that may be. I would, I would not at this time, other than uh, uh, thinking about securing a grant because if we go to Mass Historical, we can go to Mass Historical for 50% of the money. If we were to fund, for example, the 12000 to then take the buildings down and finish that work, that could be matching money for the additional 12000 for um, the, ar the archaeologists, the signage and whatnot. But again, I come back to the 13th of February to decide whether or not that's a priority. Further. If we now look at the open space and rec plan, we have a series of meetings from the middle of February to 1st of March. We then are going to write a grant to now develop that plan. And so we're not going to have that in time for town meeting. So it's, it's a year from now that we would have priorities coming. Yeah. Exactly. And, and what, I, what I would look to do, and, I, and we spoke earlier about really we're not taking advantage of external monies and we need to find a way to capture those external monies. And again, if we have to wait a year on the open space plan to look to the priorities, then we have to wait a year. But we need to think about what are the funding sources. And your idea of meeting with the accountants, or the treasurer and the, the banks as far as how to borrow and whatnot, I think that's huge. Spot on. Yeah. And I'll, I'm going to, like I told you the other day, I will Spot speak on. to them and encourage them to do this with you. Great. Remember when we met yep. the other day? Well, I guess, Clarence, I, I, I hear what you're saying. There's a lot of unknowns. Yes. But, but we, we go to each of our departments, and, and they say there's some unknowns. They're not sure if they can get grants. But what they do is they'll say, it's almost like yes. worst case scenario. Yes. Best, yeah. best guess, or, yeah. or do a best case, worst case, actually. And, and, yeah, we, yeah. Can, we can bound it that way, yeah. where it's kind of like, if we can get external funding, these are all the things we want to do. If we get external funding, it'll cost us this much. If we get no external funding, it would be this yeah. much. And provide it to them in that well, format. Just like the tearing down of buildings. Yeah, yeah. We're spending 9000 bucks yeah. when we could have gotten the money for nothing. Yeah. I mean, 9000 bucks may not sound like, yeah. but it's nuts. Because of the legal fees to get, to get permission yeah. to tear them down. So anyway, yeah. so. And, 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 and it, according to the bylaw, we, we, most, we submit the capital plan to you. And you approve it or disapprove it, but you ha you're, you're supposed to present it at the town present, meeting. Yes. So, oh, for uh, you know, mm -hmm. And, and we have a comment section. It's, it says, you know, this is what we think, yep. but it could change because we can get a grant or something. So it, we'll meet that uh, May 1 deadline, providing you guys give us your... your cause you, you, you get ours. You, you, you get ours. <laughs> you'll get it. Yeah, good. Okay. With a little help from you. Nope. All right. <laughs> Personally, uh, <laughs> both. Yeah, okay. And thank, you, thank you for your time. Again, I apologize for not missing the meeting. That's okay. We forgive you this time. Okay. Thanks, Colonel. Thank you, Colonel. For all you do. Seriously. Thank you. See ya. Okay. Next on the agenda here is uh, to go to sign a letter of support for the Congregational Church grant application. And maybe I could. Turn this over to Mr. Snyder. Certainly, I will put my hat on as the chairperson of the church council. And the church is looking to uh, up, uh, to stabilize the uh, state uh, 
do repairs and the like to the steeple and other external surfaces. Uh, we met with Mass Historical last week and their next funding round needs uh, an application by March 23rd. The Board of Selectmen has been gracious in the past in our last two submissions to Mass Historical successful transmissions, let, let, let us say, uh, to be able to receive uh, matching monies to do the external work of the, of the church. Maybe I should back up. So that there's this uh, thing that came up about a week ago about um, division of church and state. Mass Historical has, from the very beginning, looked to preserve historic sites mm -hmm. and buildings. Churches are part of that. The churches were part of the commons of this commonwealth for a very long time from the very beginning and so what what they're able to do and there have been lawsuits or, or legal actions taken and this is confirmed that in fact by the courts that mass historical can fund the external portions of the building and as you can see the building continues to be well maintained now moving up to the steeple if you look at the north side of the steeple you'll see some some areas where we need to get up there and the guy with the Boston chair is quoted to go up and do his thing again. And there's some other areas that we'll work on. But I appreciate the board's uh, support of the uh, grant submission so that we can see if we can uh, do some additional work. Yeah. I, I remember when you talked about the steeple. I remember when they first started years ago uh, doing renovating the church. They tried. I remember they were, everybody was out watching them take the steeple off the church and they were doing it so Or it was going to fall down. Oh, it was going to fall down. I yeah, think. so the, the good news is that that structure is supported. That was 1998. Yeah, it was and, and now it's 20 years and it needs, we need to get up there with, with caulking. And, and, and last year we were very, or a year ago, we were very successful to get the flanks of the church mm -hmm. up to the roof. And now we need to take the steeple from the roof line on up. So that's what we're, that's what we're planning. You've done a, you've done a nice job. We work at we work at it. Thank you. I'm presuming you can't vote on that. So I am I'm, going to recuse myself. Okay, so I'll make the motion to to support the or provide a letter of support to the congregation well, right church application. Here. Oh, okay. To sign it, right? All I have to do is sign it. Okay. So well, I was just going to make a motion yeah, to to uh, right. to go ahead and authorize yeah. uh, the chair to sign yeah. that. I'll second that. Any I uh, Oh, Karen, this is a purple pen. Can I? Here's here's a black one. I think. Thank you. So I got six weeks to put the proposal together. Good luck with that. Oh yeah. Do you want your letter now? Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Okay. All right, the next thing I'll oh, oh, maybe back up just a, 30 seconds. Uh, back to Mass Historical. I, uh, this grant round is 24. Uh, it goes through and basically it's a, a year from June that that round finishes mm -hmm. and then they start a new round. I would look to the town, especially related to this building, that we can go after monies depending on what we're mm -hmm. looking to do. Um, at the next round, which would be about this time next year, mm -hmm. where we can go for 50%. Right. Next. Here. next here on our agenda is um, some more special use permits for the lakes. Um, this is from a facility that's going to be at South Pond. It's called the Aluminum Fishing Series. Why don't we just do it together? Let the, hmm? You read them, and I'm going to make a motion to. Mm -hmm. We approve all of them to be signed by me. Yeah. Okay, yes. and the other one is a Quaybog Pond. It's the aluminum fishing series. Another one that's in, that's Same in day. July. And this, then this event is 623.18. It's another one on Quaybog Pond. It's called Relay for Life of Southwood. Okay. Made the motion so we can sign it. Um, I made that motion. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. And last week when they had the fishing derby up on um, Quaybog, the Lions Club, it seemed as nice there weren't any cars out there. Uh, yeah, it would not be safe. No. Would not mm -hmm. be safe. Other that years, was good. Other years they have. Especially there. where it was warm. That was, that was a good call. So. But I don't even agree with putting cars out there. Period. I'm, I'm a guy from Central Maine. You mm -hmm. <laughs> don't do that. Don't we, do that. We, we do it re reluctantly. Well. I've seen airplanes go through the ice. I've seen cars go yeah, through the ice. I know. 
Okay, this is we have, this is from, this is an appointment, and it's from the um, emergency medical squad for an on-call person. And we'd like to, they'd like to appoint um, Jay Kayla for a term to expire in January 2018. Um, Motion to approve. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. And FYI, what we're doing now is usually typically we use, when we have the appointment slips, so we have a copy in our file and we give the other copy to Mike and then he calls the person. <coughs> Mike asks us that we put the uh, appointment slips directly back to the originator and then it's their responsibility to go see Mike. It just makes it a little easier for him otherwise he's stuck with all these appointment slips and all these phone calls he makes. So that'll go back to the EMT. Okay, our next thing on the agenda is what Keith was talking about. They, I would discuss that with them the other day. Um, he wrote, it's the retiree health insurance payments. The Worcester Regional Retirement System provides a valuable service to each member entity by withholding retiree health insurance. These amounts are then paid to the participating city or town along with a report of each participant's amounts with health. This program makes it much easier for the retiree as they do not need to remember to remit each month's health and life insurance payment. It makes it easier for the town as only one monthly payment is received. Currently, some of the retirees participate while others continue to send or drop off their payments at various times. We have simple forms each participant may complete a submission to start the process. Each time there is a change in the insurance amount, medics with changes on January 1st, the treasurer's office will notify Wilson County Retirement and the retiree needs to do nothing. We would like participation to be 100% and request your support. I motion agree to with it. Totally. Motion to approve. So my, uh, I'll second it, but I'd like some discussion okay. around yep. it. My only concern is, um, can, it, is, it a, is it something we need to check with anyone else within the state, whether it's fully legal to it require is legal. it to be? Many, town, many towns do make it mandatory. Order. It's the same so, thing. So do we need to do a draft, like a policy letter from this board stating no. that? No, he no. needs to write the policy. He just needs to, support. yeah, he wrote it already. He just he needs our support. And okay. then, yeah, because I know with the teachers too, teachers' retirement has it automatically taken out too, okay. and then they send it here. I'm just asking because I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So. Okay, so um, I'd like them. Um, we're supporting it. We're supporting it. We have a second. We have a second. So. All in favor? Aye. aye. Okay. So it's all Keith again. Go ahead with it. Okay. Uh, Meanwhile, I did get an email back from Mr. Blake regarding the question we sent this morning. Okay. Oh, okay. He said he will review the, review the files on the dangerous buildings and give you the exact date when I can get back to the office. I received a voice message from town council. From yeah, all right. Yeah, that's we got the yes, first one. Yeah. 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 That's all you want to know. Yeah. Okay. He did. Oh, okay. can, can I bring up a couple of minor, very minor things under other? Yeah, because I have a minor things. I have one thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, just. I'm going to run to the rest. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Right. Um, do you want to do that first? Do you want to? You got you got a bunch of stuff. Can just, I, no, it's not a bunch two, of stuff. It's uh, two, let's, two minutes to let's adjourn. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Let's just do a quick break. Quick, quick yeah. break. All right, yeah. be right back. Are you gonna wait to that? My things are very brief. You're gonna read. You're gonna make okay, a vote. We'll, we'll call the meeting to order. Yeah, again. we'll call the meeting to order again at eleven fifty. Um, just a couple quick questions. We have the new website up. I've had a, a brief discussion with Karen about the fact that um, really no um, ongoing support of posting stuff is included in that contract. They just set it up with, and it's written in something called Drupal, which makes it you know, relatively easy for users to access. I'm still working through some access issues of my own, both to the email and to the website. Uh, Tom George has been great in assisting with that. Um, but. Uh, um, couple of different things. One is that Tom really only bills us once a year, but he's probably put a lot more hours than what he billed us for previously. Mm -hmm. If we have the budget, I'd, I'd like to uh, support the fact that just communicate with him and see if he can come up with an appropriate um, fee for all of the support he's given us so far. But uh, in the absence of, like not all of our department heads are, are comfortable with doing the updates themselves. 
I want to go through the training to find out how hard it is. And then the, the uh, building uh, inspector uh, did provide me a couple of things that he's willing to allow to be posted under his section that might make it, uh, they're educational and it might make it more useful to people who have questions um, so that it, they can get prepared to come talk to him the times when he's available yeah. in his office hours. So with your permission, once I go through the training, I know it typically would be his job, but I'd like uh, your permission to go ahead and post the stuff that he's authorized to post. And if um, you, you have now, you have fully have his permission. To do absolutely, this. he physically handed me these two things okay. and said, "You can provide these two things to townspeople in advance, so that before they talk to me, that they have this information." Okay. So, um, so, and he was actually um, pretty open to that piece of it. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is, is just a quick follow up. Um, can we send some sort of formal communication to the Board of Health that even though they felt that they had dealt with the, the quarantine question appropriately, that there isn't a lot of information on the website about um, things like if, if there's a dog bite incident that, that, that the animals ought to be quarantined or what, the, what their process is of getting notified by the dog officer and that they at least send us a courtesy well, notice of any uh, notices that they send out to the townspeople about quarantine if there's an incident in the future so that we're at least aware of it. Well, Just the communication well, between us and them well, asking. They, we're actually in charge of the animal control and they're the dog officer right. and the board right. of health is in charge of the animal inspector. Right. And, and I'm just asking that we send them a communication that we'd like to enhance the communication on those interrelated topics that are separate but sometimes for the same incident might require action of both offices to just coordinate our efforts and if the animal control officer responds to something that she just sends them a courtesy notice and then when they receive it that they acknowledge receipt and that if they send out a quarantine notice that they at least copy Karen and that but way our office is aware I don't think the quarantine notice comes from the animal control. It no, it comes from the animal agent. I'm saying that the Board of Health, notif that our person, the ACO, notify them if there's an issue, which we already do. But what we don't have is a courtesy notification from the Board of Health mm -hmm. back to either animal control directly or through this office to say, hey, we received your communication that this incident happened. We have taken the following action, i.e. sent the notice to the owners that the, that, the, that the animals need to be quarantined so that we've at least closed the loop on that whole process because, because we each own a different portion of the response. I'm just trying to see if we can ask them for more communication. Well, I know, I know if there is also, if there is an animal, if there's been, an animal has been bitten or something, themselves and they got on and to go rabies, I know that the um, uh, the veterinary clinic will send notification to the Board of Health. Okay, again, my, my, my interest is that we at least get a courtesy notification from Board of Health about those sort of okay, things. Well, it's something, you know, we can talk to them about. Yeah. Do you want me to request that? Yeah. I, yeah. Okay. What, what I'm thinking is that there, there's a process and it's not anywhere. Yeah. Right. So if, so if yeah, we could have, have their input, if we could input. put our input, right. and have Sarah, yeah, Sarah put, put provide yeah. guidance to us, yeah. that would be something. Quarantino for any, any no, animal issues. All the animal issues. issues, yeah. Yeah, general guidelines. Yeah, just some general guidelines mm -hmm. so that it's in writing somewhere and everybody knows mm -hmm. what the policy is. Because to your point before, not everybody has 40 years of background and experience of knowing how that process right. works. And for new people, it would be nice to have it in writing somewhere. So you want all animal issues, general guidance uh, to the what is left on the process, and then you also want them to CC us with any um, with any intervention that they do, if they have any complaints. Is that what you're asking? I'm not clear on that. Uh, it would be that the, should there be uh, notification issues that the Board of Selectmen would copy. And another thing, what they could probably even do the Board of Health can even put something on their website or even the right. uh, oh, okay. control to, office to the process. Process. Okay. Yes. on hers to what the process yep. is. Just so, it's, it's, just so there's more transparency yeah. for people okay. in town that might not have the experience in the background and know how it's supposed to go. Right. Okay. That's, that's all yeah. Just real quick, remember, okay. this is the 300th year mm -hmm. of the first town meeting yeah. in the town of Brookfield. Mm -hmm. And so what I would like to have you think about, and now that snow was going to come mm -hmm. off the ground, 
Uh, we do have a replica that was sitting in front of the church of the meeting house, uh, the original meeting house, okay. and I'm uh, wondering whether or not we would like to put it someplace in prominence within the town as we t advertise town meeting and the 300. So I just uh, have you thinking about okay. it, not something we have to decide today, but just think about where we, where we would want. It's it, it's in Mike's uh, storage area, so we can move it to okay. wherever, and we could put a little sign on it to explain the historical interest. It's just a matter of where the best place would be to put it. Okay, that's a nice idea. Yeah. Okay, what mine is about, um, <clears throat> they're having, uh, it seems as though it was a heating problem. The assessor, and the tax collector have both doors open all the time in their offices and I have come in and it's been cold in the offices and I come in and I shut the door and they claim that they need just a communication and have the doors open but the, the doors have always been closed in the winter and it seems as though the, the new furnace for the hallways coming in and heating the offices because the, the heat doesn't even come on in the main office. And Mike has spoken to Al about this quite a bit, and he shut the door and he opens it right back up again, and then no heat gets down here for a long at all. So I told him, I said, I believe the door should be shut. They shouldn't have it in the winter. The door shouldn't be open because you're running, uh, what's happening is the new furnace is heating all those office spaces, and I don't think that's what it was meant for. Well, I mean, if they have so, communication so, so. with one another, I mean, they should be go from one's office. You just in the dead of winter, you shouldn't have all these office doors wide open. Well, so it, it's actually, although that, although that's a behavioral issue to me, and I know that we have a, a different issue with the heating in that we, we did have the pipes start to freeze up on because we don't have good balance between the two systems. Uh, my, my thought is. Do we have, and, I, I, and shame on me, I haven't gone through the variance report that Carrie sent out last week, but do we have any funds available that we could bring somebody in to balance the two systems? Because it seems like um, what we may want to do, because this new furnace is so much more efficient, um, is find out what it would cost to, to pipe some of its output a couple of different places, one being where we're seeing the freezing pipes, um, and the other one being actually bring some of the heat for that into this zone, or figure yeah, out. I have my own zone, but, but the problem is it doesn't. It doesn't Lonnie has no her. Oh, Lonnie's only source of heat comes from the large room. So if from the big office, so if there heats off, 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 then she ends up. Well, getting well, I, well, I think one of the. I but think the purpose, you, when for many years, all the years I was here, we always kept those doors shut, and in the main door, you would come into like the town court office. We always had a sign there, you know please come in side door. But I mean, to me, they're defeating the whole purpose of having a new furnace out there because the furnace wasn't put in to heat the whole office spaces, like heat L's and heat the main office. But, and I have shut it many a times and they open it right back up again. Well, if you just move the thermostat into Lonnie's office because then her, her temperature would control, would control whether the heat comes on or not. Taking me back, I don't, I'm not sure. So what we have is we have the old furnace that is heating this square basically mm -hmm. here to the main yeah. office. We have a new furnace that was to heat the hallway uh -huh. and, and the accountant and and uh, uh, building inspector, building inspector yeah. and and mm -hmm. Al's office. I'm just yeah. so so those ought to be sequestered that way, and this ought to be sequestered yeah. this way. So now where's the door getting open? The side door, it's right in between the, the tax assessor. collector and the assessor. They're just leaving that door wide open all the time. And Mike has asked him too before to shut the door, and he's gotten in little squabbles with him, and I mean, the door has to be shut. So, so what we have is we have a heating system yep. here that wants mm -hmm. to be segregated from yep. there, so doors need to be yes. maintained yep. to, to essentially, re again, if it were cheaper to use the new furnace, I'd use the new furnace. Yep. but. Well, I guess my question is, I'd like to find out if it is it. So, do we have any expert on on the heating system? We really don't, do we? we? No, but I mean, the purpose is, I think, it's defeating the whole purpose because 
it, it wasn't meant to be put in to heat all those offices. No, I, I agree with I totally agree with that. Where I was headed with the conversation was that given that the new furnace mm -hmm. is as efficient yeah. as it is, and we have the old furnace yeah. and it's not as efficient, that does it make some sense to to look at it, not change yeah. anything right. to the best point of piping stuff. Whatever. No, I'm just, I'm just saying, have somebody look at it for, to for see if the balancing. For, for now, the balancing is you sequester the two and right. you keep the doors closed. Yeah. Right. So that's that's our instruction. So step two is, and if you give me permission, what I'd do is I'd turn to Bill Simpson and I'd say, Hey, Bill, you, have, you work with the heating yes. guys. Would you look at if there's a more efficient way sure. to heat the existing areas? Yeah. So because because we have to we we have to do that anyway yeah. because of that freezing issue yeah. that we had in the bathroom. Right. Okay. Right. So we need to get somebody in, and I guess what my point is, and and to your what point is the first issue? thing is what freezing, freezing issue? issue. So he had copied the whole board of selectmen well, back well, back well, in December. Said, no, he he never said it froze. He said it. Well, he well, thought it was going to freeze. Was, right. right. Well, it was, it was very it was but very close to freezing. But that's totally different than this subject I'm talking about because right as if today I asked Karen to turn the heat up and to warm because I said it was cold in here yeah. and the door is open wide open and you're still not the cold air is still right. coming but that's in. here here doesn't really have anything to do with that thing no is, I understand yeah. that Karen but it didn't even would you put in the heat up it didn't do anything right, in here right, because right, you got right. the cold air coming from out there oh all right got so it. Okay. doors are closed to maintain the security right. of the two systems yeah. right Second, I will ask Bill Simpson sure. to take a look to determine whether or not there's some balancing mm -hmm. that we could do or other improvements okay. related to the heating system. Yeah. All right. And yep. maybe Karen could send a memo out saying that we want the side door closed. Oh, well, just is there a sign still on it? I'm trying I to think. I don't know if it is. If, oh, we'll put a sign up. But if they need communication with one another, you just go from room to room. Can I have permission to just chat? You don't have to haul up back and forth. Can, can, can I have permission to just chat with them? I have talked to them best. Okay. Yeah. No, about let's it. leave it. But okay. doors, the way it is, we're doors. just going to take them and we're going to send a memo and say that we want that door shut. Okay. And, and we're, we're going to work with Bill yeah, to see if there's some other improvements. Yeah, I think it's doing. nice to have that in the communication. That way they know at least that we're, there's some. We're just some not making a mandate. Yeah, exactly. If there's a better way, let's find out. But I mean, I can't see the people in these other offices being cold. And they shouldn't oh, no. have to be bringing in electric heaters to warm the place. That's the thing. We're using more electricity. More electricity, yep. All right. Okay, do we have else? any other thing on our agenda here? Nope. All right. Motion to adjourn. Uh, uh, oh, Sharon. I'm sorry, Sharon. <clears throat> you want to come take a seat? Yes. Okay. I'd just like to address some comments that were made earlier by former Cable Access Chair James Sniffen. Um, I won't go over the minutes thing because I think that's been thoroughly discussed and I appreciate the board's support for the work we've been doing all along and their understanding of the constraints we're under, especially since James quit on us without notice back in February, leaving a what should have been a seven person board and was down to four to three people doing all of the work. But he made a comment in the form of a guess that because we had not been holding meetings that we were somehow in violation of the open meeting law. I just want to go on the record as to say that we do our meetings by the book. We have meetings when we have to set policy. We have meetings when we have to make funding decisions. Or when we're requesting something from the larger town, for example, the Board of Selectmen. We do not need meetings to schedule video shoots. That is taken care of with the programming list that I have been submitting to every meeting for the past five years, which James is well aware of and which he has possession of copies. You do not need to have a formal board meeting to ask somebody to cover a meeting. The open meeting law says nothing about that. It's not even implied. So to state that because we've not been having meetings that somehow we're holding rump meetings, clandestine meetings, behind, the, behind people's back meetings, I just want to set the record straight. That is not happening. It has never happened. And when we need to do town business, we do hold meetings. The reason meetings have not been held in five months is because, number one, Nothing that I've described has come up that necessitates a meeting. Number two, we have not had the time because 
Three of us are doing all the work. A fact of which Mr. Sniffen is well aware because one of the reasons he stated for quitting was because he felt he wasn't getting the support that he deserved. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Well, I would like to make a motion to adjourn at 1205. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll second that motion. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, again.